The librettist of Ariadne on Naxos, Hugo von Hofmannsthal, called the opera a bizarre piece of work. <laughs> it includes a serious opera telling the ancient Greek story of the princess Ariadne, abandoned on the Mediterranean island of Naxos by her lover, the Athenian prince Theseus, to whom she'd revealed the secret of the labyrinth built by her father, the king of Crete. With this serious opera is combined the antics of a troupe of comedians playing the traditional characters of Commedia dell'arte. It's enough to make an audience wonder what's going on. But audiences have coped with it and made it one of Richard Strauss's more popular creations. Opera Theatre of St. Louis is currently producing it for the third time. Strauss was most interested in the serious opera. Hoffmannsthal wanted to play with the juxtaposition of the serious and the comic. The situation they invented for combining the two has the richest man in Vienna entertaining his guests at a grand party with a new opera he's commissioned, followed by the antics of the comedians and wrapped up with a grand display of fireworks. They get thoroughly combined because at the last minute the millionaire has decided there isn't enough time to do both the opera and then the comedy. They must be done at the same time. The young composer of the opera, seeing both his creation and his career destroyed by this turn of events, threatens to burn his score. But Zerbinetta, the star of the comedians, assures him that her troupe will enhance the performance of his opera, not detract from it. They do this by trying to comfort Ariadne, who's abandoned and longing for death, and they try to comfort her by making her laugh. She may not, but we do, if the performers are good enough comedians. Strauss plays along, quoting Mozart and Schubert and the styles of earlier opera composers to enrich the mix. At the end, though, when Bacchus comes to rescue Ariadne, she discovers that there is life after Thesis, and the two lovers sail off to their divine destiny. Strauss reverts to his post-Wagnerian romanticism. As one who is not a great fan of post-Wagnerian romanticism, <laughs> I confess that as the music swelled and Christopher Ackerman's lights played transcendently on the sky blue backdrop, I half expected to hear another Strauss work made familiar by the film 2001 A Space Odyssey. <laughs> But I don't think either Strauss or Hoffenstahl intended the parody to continue at that point. <laughs> I thought it was very smart of Opera Theater to ask Sean Curran to be the stage director for this production. Curran is primarily a choreographer, and while the piece has no elaborate dance numbers, Curran gave the five comedians the comic moves they needed to get their laughs. Fortunately, they were actors and dancers enough, as well as singers. One even did a split to make it work. When operas try this sort of thing, I always long for musical theater performers who do it better. But these came close. Especially does So Young Park, the Zerbinetta. Casting her was another brilliant stroke by opera theater. Park can sing, as she demonstrates brilliantly, in Zerbinetta's second act coloratura showpiece, and she can act and act comedy. She's joined by John Brancy as her harlequin and Eric Van Hennigan, Benjamin Lee, and Miles Mikanen as the other three comedians, all costumed by Amanda Seymour, not in the comedia tradition, but in the tradition of British Music Hall. The fine singing and acting continue throughout the cast, with Rory MacDonald conducting singers and orchestra, Marjorie Owens and A.J. Glucker to give Strauss his full due as Ariadna and Bacchus, as the nymphs comforting Ariadna, Elizabeth Sutfin, Stephanie Sanchez, and Liv Redpath get lovely music. Cecilia Hall, in the trousers role of the young composer, is even more self-pitying than Ariadne. Levi Hernandez is the sympathetic music master, and Matthew De Batista the dancing master. Ken Page appears as the millionaire's major domo, quite full of himself and far superior to these mere artists he has to deal with. <laughs> James Schutte designed the sets, cluttered in the first act performer's tiring room, simple and open for the second act. A friend with me said he hadn't enjoyed a piece so much in some time. I wasn't quite there. <laughs> well, I'm not surprised, but I had a good time, too. Well, let's hear some Strauss, shall we? Hey, thanks for watching. Click here to subscribe and check us out on Facebook. The link is below.